Abuja for a more cover by Mogul Life Media. So now, update about FIDP dampering sense and no more. It be no more, but no, I'm a debate. So more now, could jump on sign to price say a banner do a pie in your papa and change nine papa. Any other things you only may be a dear or sometimes run about better paint because it's true. Why open so no one to trim come more effort business in one for one number zero two four four six five three eight four nine. And I say zero two four eight. Seven four seven three seven nine. Kujamba kwa science price na yangu pa ya debo da inswa. Eni atensi e huni yema efi yenchi yamba sisi. Busi ya four efu ise IGP dam pare ensi ensi mno eba yano ensi mbere enamdia ba betu mimi na sabre di IGP dam pare eni de George me ka de George sa etuese. Eh, hey, Mr. George Asari, Mr. George Mensa, any IDP name one also the judge, I could pay Parliament Committee in the name. Now, Sabri, the IDP, I could in one also, Bomo de Bonina, or no so I could in one. Now, answer me because we read the Nibiti in a more seminal. May Kyle say, Yet once has come a come with power, mommy, about so kind so, or the son lady as a young coma, fear number zero five four seven six zero three zero eight five. You could see him come to train your embra. Honorable Chair, let me speak briefly about my colleagues here. George is my big brother. JB is my kid brother. Asari is my brother. The beautiful thing is this, Honorable Chair. We've been together for far long. And my brother George, you know, his, his wife, since I joined the police today, I call her my mom. And that will never change. And JB, my brother, my kid brother, when I became the Inspector General of Police, I call you and offer you the position of Director Cybercrime. My brother Asari has already gone through a whole process at various places. And by the time I came, he was still at the position of where he is today. We do not have records to ask to where precisely he wants to be. And this is how I have coexisted with all of them. And as you can see from behind, all my management teams are here because that is how we do our things. Then, all of a sudden, this matter came up and the matter was about finding out what has happened and who said what and where it came from. And my brothers were given opportunity to come and speak. And they did speak and made the indication that, yes, they are involved in what was happening. Then all of a sudden, instead of them to focus on that matter, they came out with wild allegations. Honorable Chair, with wild allegations. That touched my person the police leadership that I lead, and the entirety of the police service. Without, until today that I'm being told that now they have some evidence, without a shred of evidence, Honorable Chair, at the time that they were making it, without a shred of evidence. And Honorable Chair, those wide allegations, without a shred of evidence, has brought a lot of pain to myself, my family across the country, and especially my wife and children. That you are so patriotic because you believe in what you call pan ghanianism where you think that because of your multi-ethnic nature, everybody you see, as long as the person is a Ghanaian, is your brother or a sister, mother or father uncle or auntie. Then the pain also to my command, my leaders, my team that we work together that we all know. And the pain to the thousands of police people who are appreciating the strides that we are making in transforming the organization to be the best institution in the country and a reference point for the rest of the world. They came, made all these allegations in order to cover up 
probably the shame associated with what they got themselves involved in in the first place. And I, an innocent person, focusing on my job, working in concert with my team and all commands across the country to keep the country safe and make it to be at peace with itself. I've been asked to come and answer to these allegations, which are wide, baseless. And I feel in my spirit that this is just not fair. It is just not fair. Are we killing patriotism? That anybody can just get up, make allegations upon allegations, and people who go across the country at times 48 hours non without sleep, just keeping the country at peace, will be called to come and answer allegations that are unfounded. And that becomes something. Anyway, I'm here. I have no choice. I have no choice and have come. And I say it to the glory of God, my maker who sustains me every day. I will speak to the matters as you direct. And I'm doing this because of the respect I have for myself, for my family, especially my children and wife, for the office that I occupy, for my brothers and sisters who are sitting behind me, that we are pull ourselves together in an unprecedented manner in a teamwork to get these things done for this country, and for the respect I have for institutions of state, including the parliament that we are here today, and more importantly, the respect I have for Mr. President Nana Adranko Kufuado for the honor that he has done me for making me the inspector general of police to work with my colleagues. And equally more importantly, for the respect I have for the good people of this country. So Honorable Chair, I am here being asked to answer to why allegations unsubstantiated by my brothers in order to cover up their shame. I am ready. I thank you. You quoted the Bible, you know. And the, it seems to me you are a student of the Bible, are you? Honorable Chair, I'm a Christian, and the Bible is my reference point. There could be a student of the Bible who may probably be, be using the Bible just for examination purposes. But we may not necessarily be a Christian. But I'm Christian. And my reference point in terms of what I guides me is the Bible and the Spirit of God. Thank you. Did you ever find in the Bible that the innocents suffered? The man who claims is innocent suffered. Have you heard it before in the Bible? Did you read it? Honorable Shai, I am a Christian who understands that. And that is what it is. That is why I'm a bit surprised that um, um, you complain about uh, maybe you doing a good job and you're going through some challenges and suffering because we know that the innocent can suffer. That's the story of Joseph. Never slept with a party first wife. I went to jail. Have you heard this tree adage that only Pakistan has him to know? Have you heard it before? I wish I have, but the point I'm trying to make is the fact that we are all human beings. Are you reckoning? What is it about you that 
people pass a vote of confidence like this. That if we are there, MPP cannot break the eight. And if we are not there, then it becomes um, an opportunity to break the eight. What is informing um, this vote of confidence in you? And what is significant is that there's a lot of intelligence you have that I don't know. Honorable Chair, I still make a point. That is somebody's opinion. And what is that about me? He's doing a professional police job. And then that's not, nothing more than that. Grateful to you. Now, I yield space to the other members to ask questions and um, we note what the IGP will say. So, the vice was, I thought you had a residual power when they finished. No, no, no. Do, these are preliminary matters. Prim okay. Oh. Yes. Yes. Ne but let me. These are privileges. Yes. Okay, so, so. These are privileges reserved for leadership. Then, then yes. So, but, Honorable Patrick Boama, do you want to deny the fact that leadership is entitled to certain privileges that you are not entitled to enjoy? <laughs> so, let, 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 let me take the floor. Inspector General. If you go through the record of proceedings that this committee furnished you with, you find that there is um, some accusation which has been labeled against you which is to the effect that you orchestrated the recording of the leaked audio as IGP, I want you to speak directly to this particular accusation. Did you play any role in respect of the recording of the leaked audio? Honorable Chair, like the chairman asked initially, I did not play any role in it. Now, IGP, you also read through the proceedings and you would find that in it, you may want to respond to this in the open, I don't know how you, it sits with you, but you were also accused of being the worst IGP this country has ever had. How did you receive the accusation and what is your reaction honorable chair thank you very much honorable chair i think probably my brother wanted to say i'm the best and he missed it Because the records are there for everybody to see. The beauty of mankind is that everybody has an opinion and you can express it in any form or shape. But that has not changed the facts. And this is the point, Honorable Chair. Since my colleagues and I and the rest of the commands across the country had opportunity by the grace of God and the honor done me by His Excellency the President, Nana Adudanko Ekufuado. We committed ourselves to transforming the organization to become the best institution in the country and a reference point for Africa and beyond in a teamwork fashion based on Genesis 1, 26. So we've been granted 
that I'm the worst. Then all of us collectively are the worst, including probably my brother who was serving in that capacity as member of the team that I led. I lead. I lead. So I think it was a slip of tongue on his part. But let me speak to the issue. This is what it is. We, the current administration, want to be the best in terms of all those who have come before us. And we have a good reason for that. Honorable Chair. And we are there getting on to becoming the best in the history of the country. And I'll explain. The reason why we want to be the best and we are getting to be the best as a police administration under my leadership is that when most of our forebearers were there, we were. We saw what they did right and the challenges they faced. So being a graduate of management and leadership and a continuous student of sociology, psychology, and philosophy, it is just clear that when you saw your forebearers doing what they were doing and you saw what they were doing right and you saw the challenges they were facing and you have this background and you have the opportunity, you surely should perform better than them. And it is simple. You do what they were doing right, you learn from their mistake and make them better. So if you add them to what they were doing right, there's no way you cannot be better than them. And this is what we are doing. And at the point, maybe I will share with you so many interventions we have put across the country and working in concert with all the other security agencies that has brought us to this level of peace, security, law and order across the country in an unprecedented way. But the next point, Honorable Chair, is the fact that we don't want to be the best in the whole life of the police service. But rather, we want those who come after us to be better than us. Because by the same yardstick, they are watching us in terms of what we are doing, those that we are getting right, and the challenges that we are facing. So that they be able, they will be able to outperform us. And when they do that, then they will also become better than us and all our forebearers. And when that happens, we will end up building strong institutions and not having strong men. And this is what we are doing. So it is not true that my administration is the worst. It can never be. He missed it. He missed it, and with your permission, I will speak to a few of the interventions that we put across. First, your, select, your Honorable Chair, we came in at a time that so many places across the country were engulfed by criminal elements, especially armed robbers all over the place. And now, across all the major highways, you can feel it. In the past, in the past, when you are traveling from Kintampo, Bupe, Tamale, you normally have to say your last prayers. What is the situation now? In the past, when you are traveling from Tafo or Simu Begro to Kwau. It was virtually a no go area. In the past, when you are traveling from Kintampo, Zamrama to Prime, it was a horrific journey. In the past, when you are traveling from Efijasi through Kumau to Robonso to Mami Krobo, you must forget it. In the past, when you are traveling from Bamboy, Bole, Tuna, Tuwa, it's another ball game. 
in the past, when you are traveling from Takwa to Bogoso, was a Kropon, it was a sad scene. In the past, when you are traveling from Dungawanofin, even to Asimfosu, a terrible situation. And from Praso to New Adubiase, to my big brother's hometown, Bekwai, to Kumasi, it was another thing. I can go on and on and on. And as for Donkokrom, it was a daily thing. We've worked together as a team at all levels of command and across all the security agencies to normalize the situation. Equally, the crimes that were happening, residential robberies in all our cities, we've stemmed the tide in a committed way. This is just one. And with the support of the police council, with discussions, and with the approval of His Excellency the President, we have created seven more new police regions to bring police policing closer to the people of this country. Because our assessment when we came to office, we saw that policing across the country was very minimal, roughly about 47 or there about percent. But with instructions from Mr. President, we've been able to deal in policing in a manner that has never happened before. And that dovetail into the concept of visibility, where we've demonstrated the presence of policing at all corners of the country through the establishment of 144 regional FPU bases across the country. Currently, the establishment, we've been able to roll out 121 of them. And this come with an average of 35 officers, number of motorbikes, a vehicle, to ensure that they are engaging the communities, they are patrolling the highways, and then they are patrolling the communities so that they will have their peace of mind to live their life. Honorable Chair, I can go on and on and on. When we came, we have established Police Emergency Medical Intervention Fund with the approval of Mr. President, where 1.6.1 million cities is in there to ensure that every police officer who gets injured in the course of duty can be sent to everywhere in the world to give treatment to the person in order to come on board. Honorable Chair, in the process, as you have seen, with our quest to engage the communities and win their hearts and minds, gone across the country with my team, analyze and identify, and identify and analyze all their concerns, working on putting measures in place through special groups in order to ensure that they work and keep them safe. Honorable Chair, we have also worked on the issue of decentralizing so many things that were centralized at the headquarters. The welfare department, counseling department, intelligence unit, processing of certain things, including criminal checks. So we are on the quest of ensuring that at the end of the day, we leave the organization better than we come to find it. So all these interventions, almost about 45 or there are about of them, and putting it together, working with the other security agencies, that is what has brought us far in terms of the type of internal security that we enjoy. So would anybody come in to say that you are the West IGP? It's unfounded, it's unfortunate, and I think the best the person could have done, if he has nothing to say, is probably keep quiet and allow the good people of this country to make a determination on us. And Honorable Chair, the final point on this matter is that it is not about dampering. It's about the police administration. It is not about dampering. It's about the police administration. The police is not a sole proprietorship. It is an institution with governance and management structures. Dampering is just one 
of the officers involved in the governance and the management structure. So that is what it is. And we work in concept and make sure that all decisions that we need to take, we take it as a group. And when it needs to the attention of the police council, we get that as well. But the interesting point is this. As my colleagues will bear us out, or will bear me out, all these decisions, where it matters, we even send it to the, division, the regions, the districts, the divisions, and the stations for them to hold meetings and get their inputs involved. And that's the level of teamwork that we brought to bear on the work that we do. So it isn't about dampering. It is about an institution that we have decided to work together because nobody put a rope on our neck to join the service. And at the end of the day, the service doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to any individual. But once we are there to earn our daily bread in service of the people, we have to find a way of working together. And that is what I have done since I came. And my colleagues are the best witnesses for that. Some officers are due promotions, especially those at your level. I know some have to go to the police council for uh, recommendations and approval. What is the situation with regards to promotions? Are there any um, holdups with regards to promotion of certain junior officers within the service? Honorable Chair, there is no holdup of promotion of any junior officer in the whole police service. Even as we speak, the structure has been that any junior officer who is four years are sent to training and they are promoted. And we are waiting to have all of them promoted. Those who are due, the next set of junior officers who are due for promotion, who are now, we have worked on in trying to rebuild their capacity, send them to Achiramatin in the eastern region to reshape and recalibrate them. Are currently there and we are rolling out these and making sure that they are promoted in December and we've arranged it in such a way that it becomes like something like a Christmas call. So nobody in the service, nobody in the service, and the junior right that you are saying, whose promotion is being held. So that is another set of concorded story that is being put out there for mischievous reasons. What about um, those senior officers whose promotions have to be sent from management to council? Honorable Chair, every one of them, with the exception of a few, have been sent. And the few who have been sent, and the few who are there, is based on the fact that beyond the number of years that you have been in the position, there is other factors. Other factors. And I'm told a few, it's about seven or eight or nine other factors that come into it. And those other factors include competence, include vacancy, include integrity, including all other factors. And when this, beyond that, it becomes the preserve of the police council, and from that level, who we'll make recommendations to His Excellency Mr. President and for that to be effected. So assistance, everybody who's supposed to be promoted based on the junior rank has been done. Everybody who's supposed to be promoted based on the senior rank has been done. And that is where we are. Thank you, Honorable Chair. So the grumbling officers, senior officers, says um, promotion that has not taken effect. It's not from POMAC, but from the police council. Your Excellency, Honorable Chair, that is the position because they are the people to promote. And more importantly, recently a meeting was held and some consideration has been done. But the most important thing is that everybody who's supposed to be promoted 
in line with our policies are being promoted. But the point that has to be made is that it's not a question about how many years you have been at the place. We will have all loved to be promoted as soon as we are four years and there about. Vacancy, competencies, and other things factor into it. I myself, at a point, I was in my, on my rank for six years. And I didn't complain because I understand. IG, is that a practice that you can be at your rank for six years? Because we have your, your promotions here. And that I can tell the committee that between 97 and 2003, that's about six years, you're also a subtenant. But it's also a record that from ASB in 1996 to DSB, I don't, I, DSB, I, have, I don't have the date here. But to superintendent was just a just about two years or less than that. And I would say, in my introduction, remark, I did alluded to that, and I did say that that promotion was based on my academic qualifications in line with existing policies at that time. Yes, I understand. We we have a fair idea that once you chartered as an accountant, you were jumped from one position to subtenant of police. Is that policy still in place? Are those who have for those who have um, upgraded themselves academically? Honorable Chair, that policy. As far as I'm concerned, with the passage of Constitutional Instrument CI 76 2012, that policy, from my reading of the, that CI 76 2012, is no more in, in operation. will determine the seriousness of that, uh, Mr. Andan. Um, we were also told that some junior officers have been jumped or triple jumped by your good self without having gone through the merits and it became an issue for us to interrogate. Um, uh, can you speak to that, please? Honorable Chair, the important thing is that these promotions which is in line with our regulations in terms of special recommendation. Nobody has been jammed three times. But the most important thing is this. These are matters that are discussed by police council and approved. So if a decision on that matter has been worked on by the police council, I think it will be difficult for me to speak to it. Do you have a unit called uh, the inspection unit? Yes, Honorable Chair, we do. What, what is their duty? What are their duties or functions? Honorable Chair, broadly I can say that the document establishing them, I don't have it readily here, but as the name sound, they are out there to ensure that they do inspection of police facilities, police records, and they make recommendations. And there are 16 officers in one office, we are told. We're informed that in that small office, you have about 16 officers instead of four occupying that office. On that the, case. the point is this. The word instead of four. I don't know where it is coming from. We have a unit, and a unit of four people, then I don't know what it is. There's no limit as to the number of people who will be there to do inspections across the country. And 
the other points of pay being in one office, I have to check because the unit has a commander who is a deputy commissioner of police. And you agree with me that it will be a difficulty for Inspector General of Police to be going around looking for offices for people who are supposed to know where to look for an office for their work. And if the challenge is not beyond them, or if the challenge then go beyond them, then drawing to the attention of the relevant commissioner and the shadow and handle. So now that you've brought to my attention, I'll go and look at it. If the commander there has not been able to look at it, I'll go and look at it and in my usual self, work with my colleagues and see what that issue is. There, there, there seem to be a lot of units under your administration, um, inspection units, uh, visibility, and recently, we heard of the special damper unit. Do you have any special damper unit for purposes of special operations who are untouchable, who don't report to anybody and to the Inspector General of Police? And we are told some of them have beard, some wear earrings, and uh, not properly attired, and a lot more. Is there, is there any unit within the service like that? Honorable Chair, first of all, there is no unit called Special Dampery Unit. It's a figment of people's imagination. And I think the point must be made. The second point is that there is a police intelligence directorate which complements police operations. And what has happened in the past is that we were having challenges when it comes to these operations. And we needed to top up with our intelligence. And the intelligence were at only the national level. So my colleagues and I, once again, worked together. And we decided to decentralize that unit such that each of the 25 policing commands will have their own intelligence unit that shape intelligence gathering to inform the operations of the region. So all those units under the various regional commanders, and then they also work in tandem with the national director general in charge of intelligence. They don't report to me. Thank you. Not to personalize matters. You want to come in? Okay. Oh, Aji. Oh, the, the, the concluding part of your response is um, where I want to, you know, proceed from. You said they don't report to you. Now, part of the allegations against you is that that unit in question reports only to you they don't take instructions from your commanders i think that was part of the testimony before the committee uh, when previous witnesses appeared so say so what's your reaction to that and i would say like i said it has is there a unit that has been institutionalized with the commanders and a chain of command up to the national level with a director general in charge. But when you go to the regions, it's like CID, which will work with the regional commander as, his, as one of his subordinates and when it comes to criminal investigations. And yet, they also work in tandem with the director general CID. This is the same framework that has been used for the establishment and decentralization of the intelligent component of the police service. In the past, it's like intelligence were things that we needed to keep improving as an institution and also work across other security agencies and the intelligent component and to make sure that this country continue to be at peace with itself. So the units are 
institutionalized. The units are with the regional commanders. And at the national level, they have a director general who is in charge of them and who from time to time give us a briefing on our daily meetings, on our weekly meetings, and when, as and when we also have emergency meetings or matters of concern, and we get it done. There is nothing like anybody or a group of people out of the normal chain of command reporting to Dambara or anything. It is a lie. Aji, um, what is the administration, your administration's um, relationship with the military high command? We were given an impression that all was that all wasn't um, well with the police administration and the military high command. Well, I would say this is another lie, just to paint you black, or typically calling a, ba a dog a bag neck and hunky. We have an excellent relationship with all the heads of the security agencies. And it's so excellent that at the end of the day, the cordiality goes beyond the official work. The beauty of it is this. Constitutionally, each and every of the agencies has their role to play. And we know where we also need to work together in what I term institutional teamwork and get things done for this country. So we urge these people to stop trying to put our heads against each other. It's shameful. It's not good for this country. And you cannot do this. You should stop it. They can use any other thing to get anything that they want. But they shouldn't use that. They should be patriotic. Because that's the only place we have called home, Ghana. So in their quest to achieve their selfish interest, they shouldn't create confusion. So when I would say that is what it is, and I know that's how it sits, we'll continue to work together as various security agencies, helping each other in the interest of the country, for Ghana, our beloved country, to continue to be at peace with itself. I think. And of four and same say and IDP down parry edit so parliament committee in the name a declare no home. Yeah the food for ever bros it be a tough for ma. Make us subscribe to our channels like enough and to share on all platforms, mobile life media. Yet to us as a come come maybe power and cassie about so kind so up as only the assassin coma the number zero five four seven six zero three zero eight five. Aha and a brave mama de messi makamo bye bye.